Now, Western Cape Health MEC Dr. Noma French Mbombo has opened a wellness centre for health workers at the Grootseskier Hospital. This after reviewing the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on the mental health of healthcare workers. Over 4 million and 28,000 cases have been recorded in the country since the virus reached our shores. Over 100,000 people have died. To talk to us more about this new centre in the Western Cape, we are joined by Health MEC Dr. Noma French Mbombo. Thank you so much for your time, Doctor. We really do appreciate it. I think the COVID-19 pandemic really um, caused a lot of devastation, especially for our healthcare workers. The facility was opened after the hospital assessed the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on the mental health and well-being of workers. So maybe just start off by telling us what this assessment revealed, especially about the mental state of our healthcare workers. Um, thanks, Heidi. Yes, indeed, uh, the mental state of all our healthcare workers, not only health professionals, but also even generally from security, the cleaners, and everyone. Because it's what, what the pandemic has, has done to us. But also noting that we are not necessarily living outside um, on our own bubble. We are living in dysfunctional society. We are being affected as parents, as sisters, as brothers, as human beings in a society that is also violent. Also noting that the violence is not only happening outside within the communities, but the perpetrators actually are the ones who are even assaulting uh, the healthcare workers, especially what we have seen around the EMS. Therefore, it needs for us as employers to make sure we take care of our, of our health workers. Because the question is, who cares for the carers uh, when everyone else is caring for the patients? So that's why for me, I already say that staff comes first so that they can make the patients and the clients to come first. Mm, most certainly. And I think it's so crucial that we really consider the well-being and mental state of healthcare workers. I want you to talk to us about mm. what this facility in, uh, offers and how it's going to work um, and how it has been working. What does it offer staff in terms of well-being? How can staff that want to be part of this wellness centre go about being part of it so that they can get the necessary care that they need from the facility? Um, it's a whole package. Uh, of wellness. The wellness has got um, many dimensions, which is the physical, the health, and the mental health, the social health, and the spiritual, spiritual health, as according to the World Health Organization. Within there, we've got several components. We have got the, the gym for the physical health. We also have got the, um, the, the counseling, um, clinical psychologists that are there for the staff, which have been there even before. Uh, this center has opened because you want a situation where anyone who's at work who might feel like that I'm down in the hole, I need someone to talk to, they can be able to walk and go to the facility or even after working hours or even during the lunchtime. We have got also the yoga uh, for those who may want probably to meditate. We also have the prayer rooms inside and also some rooms where uh, the, the staff can be able to play games like 30 seconds and, and everything. Plus also the other is about the training center where we're developing the, the leadership. So it caters for the whole of staff, but the whole package of the wellness, uh, which is very crucial under the circumstances because our staff will never be able to provide what they don't have which is if they're not well themselves, how will they be able to offer those kind of services um, to the patients? This sounds lovely. Um, doctor, I'm wondering if I can be part of this wellness center as well. It's oh, 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 the other thing, it has got also a couch, uh, the, the, the massage couch, which is, I, oh, I wow. fell in love with that one. I definitely need one of those. I hope our bosses are watching. Maybe they should give us a massage couch while we read the news. Uh, but I want us to just quickly move over to uh, whether or not the, uh, this wellness uh, facility is going to be, um, is it just at Kruta Skeet Hospital or will you be looking at opening up a number of other wellness uh, facilities and centers at other hospitals? Um, at this stage, it is the first one to be a center as part of the, in the human, human resource department, people's management. But it doesn't mean that other wellness um, activities or interventions are not happening in other facilities. 
for example, you might get uh, most of the facilities you do have an in-house counseling, uh, clinical psychologist, or even a counselor um, in, in house, whereas others might depend on the overall Western Cape government um, counseling services. But as I'm saying, because uh, I would normally make an example of, I cannot be as, as the ship, uh, I mean, as the captain of the ship or as the captain or who's to fly an Airbus, and then I don't prioritize the crew in order to make sure that they take care of the passengers, which is in this case are the patients. Because indeed, there is no health service. There will never be any health services without health workers. That's why we have to take care of our health workers because we need them. We we'll never know what may happen after the COVID. Not that COVID is gone, but the issue of the mental health that is happening in the whole of the country, every population, the total mental well-being is affecting everyone. That's why with the World Health Organization, they came up with uh, uh, about um, as establishing or creating well-being societies. But it starts with health workers who have to render these kind of services. Mm. Sorry, doctor, I'm not sure if I missed this, but uh, can any healthcare practitioner, a healthcare worker that doesn't work at Grotesquid attend this wellness facility? It's not just specifically for Grotesquid as staff. At this stage, it's only for Grotesquid. Grotesquid has got about 4,500, 4,000 to up to 5,000 um, staff members a day and night. So at this stage, uh, we, they are, it's only for them because it's not necessary, it's quite big. Let's just make it an example. You might get maybe a bigger room or like a hall for the yoga. You may get probably like four or five of the uh, equipment for the gym. So at this stage, it's for them. But it, it's up to them to extend it to uh, those hospitals or health facilities that are, um, are feeding to them when they do the referral. But as, 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 as things, when I was there, actually, there was already a long queue of the staff because they have to do appointments with some of the other activities. And also for the night staff, because it was only for the day staff. Because at this stage, it opens until 8 p.m., 6 a.m. to 8 p.m., which is it does cater for the uh, night staff when they come uh, early, especially they, because they normally start at 7. So at this stage, for the Grotesque, that comes from the Grotesque budget. But it doesn't stop that if they want to extend um, to the feeder, because remember, Protescare also is, is also next to UCT, or the UCT staff, they are working together. They might want to open to those, um, the others. Noting is for all staff, not only for the health professionals. Certainly, um, there's clear, it clearly sounds like there's uh, an appetite, so hopefully you'll roll this out at other hospitals in the province. I want to ask you one last question, mm -hmm. uh, Doctor, and I know we've mm -hmm. come out of the other side of the pandemic, but conditions for medical personnel mm -hmm. are still incredibly difficult, with pressures from infrastructure challenges, staff uh, shortages, mm -hmm. load shedding, water cuts, um, and just other issues that healthcare workers and healthcare practitioners face on a daily basis. So as much as this facility is definitely welcomed, many would say that we are treating the symptoms instead of actually treating the cause. What is your response to all of this? Yes, exactly. Exactly the point. Because that's why I, I uh, at the beginning of the year, I renamed the department as Department of Health and Wellness. The reason for that, we cannot only be, as you alluded to, that focusing on the illness. We have to look at the wellness because most of what we see in our health facility is not necessarily our health problems, but they are social and economic problems. The issues of the inequalities that you find that now it ends up being as health, as health system to address it. For example, poverty, uh, inequality, unemployment and also other social determinants of health. The malnutrition that we see across South Africa among the children, these are the issues that are happening outside the health system, the violence, because I'm, I'm getting reminded of the femicide, the, the, the gender-based violence femicide uh, summit that has been, been, been conducted. It, 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 all of these have to be absorbed by the health system. Uh, and it is also post-pandemic, and also in regard to the whole issue about the funding, the resources, it means that we as the health system have to do whatever that we could because we don't have a policy that says we are full. Hence, you'll get these kind of challenges where you'll see patients when their beds are full 
and they are sick. And remember, uh, uh, Heidi, when we said people must stay at home during the COVID, now those people are back and they are really sick. It means we'll see a, a, a situation where you'll see some of the patients will be sleeping on the floor while they're waiting for a bed, but as long as they are being taken care of. But the issue, uh, back to the wellness of our health workers, as for me, myself as a health professional, you don't want a situation where you feel like you are, you are helpless. That's why the issue of the moral injuries, where the, the issue of the health workers, they have to now decide which one that they need to help first, although they might all of them needing to be helped, similar with the bed, that it's not that it's, a, it's not painful that you see some of the patients that are being treated on the floor, but it's a economy conditions of uh, in the country where they end up affecting us. That's why I always say that healthy economy, healthy population, it means that at least we as health workers or the health system, at least we'll be able uh, to, things will be better, but it needs all of us, the whole of society, social development, department of police safety, economy, everyone has to be all together in order to fight the scourge, especially the socioeconomic ills that get absorbed uh, by the health system, including actually the uh, motor uh, vehicle traffic accidents that are happening, including pedestrians. We are all of these absorbed by the health system. Certainly, I mean, the, the, what healthcare uh, practitioners witness on a daily is, is very shocking. I want to ask you one last question, which is unrelated to the Wellness mm -hmm. Centre. The public sector unions say they're going uh, to possibly go on a national strike early next week. Donosa, Nahau, mm -hmm. um, are you worried about how this is going to affect uh, healthcare facilities in the Western Cape? Um, of course, uh, as I indicated earlier, there are no health services without health workers. Therefore, that's why our staff as health workers must come first. Now, the issue of coming first is not only about their state of well-being, psychosocial and physically, but also financial wellness. We are very much aware that with the public service, the issue of the wage bill and also the issue of the increase where some of these were put on pause, and, and remember, all of these are, are being done, are, are discussed, are bargaining at the national level. So that provinces are not involved in terms <coughs> of this decision. Therefore, in principle, again, as a former healthcare worker myself, a health professional, uh, it cannot be that other sectors, because we've seen that there have been increases to other sectors, uh, uh, transnet and so forth. Now, you cannot have a situation where we don't prioritize uh, our, our government employs public servants. But again, remember, there's no new money. Like I was busy now with a budget for next year, um, uh, the next budget year for the province, where we're already going through a shortfall of about 300 million because our equitable share has been decreased. Meaning now you add about almost another 300 million uh, for the 3% increase that I have to, we have to take care of uh, in regard to our 53,000 of our staff members that are there. So in principle, it's about, we should be able to prioritize our public servants, especially the call face, um, the nurses and the doctors, um, they, they should be prioritized because financial wellness is also wellness. But at the same time, the issue is about the government doesn't have that money that they promised them previously. So. We have to make sure that we reach out and uh, find each other so that it doesn't have a huge impact, which already there is a whole lot of people because we've got a staff shortage. Now, if we've got some of the healthcare workers who end up being uh, joining the strike, it will have a huge impact. So that's why I appeal, I beg to the national government or those who are part of the big bargaining council uh, chambers that they must reach out and find a common understanding so that we don't have to deal with all issues of further staff shortage because uh, of them uh, potentially protesting. But again, uh, we need to understand that there's been no increase. Even with the 1,000 per month of the cash that was being given throughout, they, I haven't heard anything much about what's gonna happen to that. So therefore, health workers, I'm talking about health workers in my case, public service general, they need to come first, not only by at the provincial level, but also the national level. Because anyway, with the national, they don't own hospitals, they don't own patients, they don't own 
health workers is the provinces have to bear the brunt when these uh, protests happen. Mm. Yeah, we'll just have to wait and see how that transpires. But it seems as though they are quite uh, steadfast in, in their approach and wanting a double-digit increase. But thank you so much for your insights, Doctor. And thank you for uh, you know starting this wellness facility and centre. I think it's so important that we look after those that look after us, especially after what's happened uh, with the COVID-19 pandemic and every other traumatic case that healthcare professionals go through on a daily basis. That is Western Cape Health MEC, Dr. Noma French. Bon bon.